I'm Peter Block here in Washington, D.C. at ACC 17. With me to my left is Daniel Friedman from Duke. And uh, Dan has done an interesting observational study concerning left atrial appendage occlusion after cardiac surgery. So Dan, tell me about your trial. Well, it really isn't a trial, your study, and then we'll talk about what it means. Absolutely, so we performed a large comparative effectiveness analysis of left atrial appendage occlusion at the time of cardiac surgery using STS-linked Medicare claims data set. Okay, and the cardiac surgery was all comers, uh, cabbage, cabbage plus valve, valve alone? Yeah, so we included patients who had valve surgery with or without cabbage and isolated cabbage, and excluded patients who had endocarditis, cardiac transplant, et cetera. Okay, so I'll come back to that, I think, maybe at the end when I ask you another question. So let's get right to it. What did you find uh, from your study? So in the overall cohort of over 10,000 patients at one year, we found that surgical left atrial appendage occlusion was associated with an almost 40% lower risk of readmission for thromboembolism among patients who received appendage occlusion. So at the front end of this, you might say, well, everybody should have left atrial appendage occlusion if they have heart surgery. Uh, but there's a little bit of a wrinkle here, isn't there, Dan? Yeah, so that's uh, a great point. So we subsequently did secondary analyses stratified by discharge anticoagulation status and found that the association between appendage occlusion and the lower risk of thromboembolism appeared to be exclusively among patients who were discharged without oral anticoagulation. And in those adjusted analyses, we found that appendage occlusion was associated with a 71% lower risk of readmission for thromboembolism, and there was no association among patients who were discharged with oral anticoagulation. So that's sort of what you would expect, isn't it, Dan? And that if you're anticoagulated, your left atrial appendage isn't going to be quite so important. But uh, do you really believe that? That's a, that's a great question. So I think that makes good pathophysiologic sense. The one word of caution that I would mention is that just because somebody is an appropriate anticoagulation candidate at the time of discharge doesn't mean that over the next two, three, four, five years they're going to be an appropriate anticoagulation candidate. So I, I don't think we should um, make any uh, strong decisions based on that data alone. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You're about to have your heart fixed, okay? And let's assume you're going to have a uh, uh, bioprosthetic aortic valve and a cabbage just for good measure, even though you're a little young. Do you want to have your left atrial appendage closed? Well, I think based on our study where we found an association between reduced thromboembolism and reduced mortality, I think it suggests that this is a reasonable procedure to consider, although this certainly isn't randomized trial data. So to answer your question, yes, I think it's appropriate to be considering this and talking to your surgeon about it, but at the same time, our data does not demonstrate that it's safe to withhold anticoagulation. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Okay, so let me ask one last question. All your patients were in AF or not? 100%. Okay. so. For all the cardiac surgeons out there, if you have somebody in atrial fibrillation and the cardiologist taking care of them after they come back from the OR, uh, at least consider talking about left atrial appendage occlusion. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks, Dan.